I spent so much time on Gwyneth Paltrow's Instagram <laughs> and on her website, Goop, that now my in Instagram algorithms have gone up the spout. They're completely batshit now. The adverts I'm getting are completely crazy. I got an advert not that long ago for a deodorant for your vulva. Yeah, they didn't have the decency to call it a vulvodorant. <laughs> Absolutely livid. That wasn't the worst thing about it. The craziest thing about it was that it was an aerosol. <laughs> Who in their right mind is aerosoling their badge? <laughs> I mean, a roll on, sure, we could all lean into that. Every cis woman knows there's not a woman in the world that needs to deodorise her vulva. Yeah? And if, as one of those cis women, you find yourself in your bedroom alone, yeah? Maybe you're getting undressed, yeah? And you find yourself thinking... You've got to get to a GP quick smart. <laughs> You're going to need some hardcore... There's not enough flat Febreze in the world that's going to sort that shit out, yeah? You need some drugs, OK? <laughs> you tossers. Impulsive personality, and I and I became you know obsessed with Gwyneth Paltrow and her bloody website Goop. I spent 17 hours on it. <laughs> I felt completely gaslit by it. I was like, come on, Gwyneth, there's got to be something here for me. Because if you don't know what Goop is, it's her flagship website. It's a lifestyle. It's a health. It's a well-being website for women. <laughs> it's everything a woman doesn't need on one website. I know. I've checked it out for you. Okay. <laughs> The kind of shit that's on there, you're like, what is this? I, th I thought, you, what the fuck is this, Gwyneth? What are you, what are you peddling, my lovely? I found a no makeup makeup routine. <laughs> is this on? <laughs> Can you hear me? I just said there was a no makeup makeup routine. <laughs> the idea being that you buy all of this makeup, you put your makeup on your face, and it looks like you're not wearing makeup. <laughs> I'm a 48-year-old lesser. I've been doing that my entire life, and so far, it has cost me fuck all. <laughs> Trying to find something in there that I could make use of. Well, I'm going to cut the tension in the room here, because I know I've created it, so now it's time to cut it. I found something, you'll be relieved to hear, that I could make use of. I found myself a yoga mat, and I thought, fine. Maybe it's a lot of you have got yoga mats. I've got one. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You can spend £10, £15, something like that. You can pick one up. I don't know, somewhere like Sports Direct or Decathlon or somewhere like that. Well, you can buy one on Goop, yeah? 55 pounds. <laughs> yeah, I thought, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, fine, okay. Well, but I've already got one. But, so if I'm gonna buy this one, this one's obviously gonna be doing something more than the one I've got, because what did you do on a mat? You sort of lie on it, roll around on it, do your stretches on it, but this is obviously gonna be doing more than the one that I'm currently doing, because otherwise, why would I be spending 550% more than the yoga mat that I've already got, currently got? Because if I'm gonna spend 550% more on a yoga mat than the one that I've currently got, I want something more from that yoga mat. Do you know what I mean? I wanna have something extra. I want extra from the yoga mat, Gwyneth. I want fucking extra. I tell you what I want. When I'm doing downward dog, I want a little tickle on my clip. So, I've talked about this before. I got picked on a lot. And sometimes people don't believe me because they're like, how? You're huge. But I didn't turn huge till after high school. I grew eight inches in one year from 18 to 19. Literal growing pains. Like American werewolf in London shit. Like just my body just going, Rrr! me falling out of a twin bed going, mom, why am I growing? So then, you know, because I would have used this shit in high school, but I didn't. So in high school, I got beat up by a girl at school in front of everybody. Another girl saved me, my friend Tracy. But I was like, don't ever do that again. That was worse. And then I got beat up by a special ed kid at high school. These jocks 
told this kid that I had fucked with some of his stuff. I hadn't. They told him I threw his shoes up on the gym. <laughs> Would I do that? Fuck no. I didn't do that. I, don't t- I can't tell this kid. I tell him, but he doesn't listen. He's hitting me with a space 1999 lunchbox. <laughs> and the whole time I'm like, dude, I'm the only one here who also knows space 1999. <laughs> Like, you're bad at making friends, especially, kid. <laughs> Have you seen Battlestar Galactica? That shit's amazing. <laughs> so I took some hits. Later, I uh, got into a nerd fight. I fought a fellow nerd at high school. It was actually, we had the fight after school. But I was the metal nerd in my neighborhood. Met this dude named Ian, and he was the punk rock dude in my neighborhood. And uh, we became friends. We bonded over being shitty at skateboarding and video games. <laughs> and we were friends for a while, about a year and a half. And then one day at high school, he decides we're not friends anymore. I think because I wanted to fuck his stepsister. I don't know. <laughs> it's a long time ago. But he decides we're fighting. He tells everybody we're fighting. Everybody at school wants to see the nerd fight at the end of the day. So kids come to our bus stop that don't even live in my neighborhood. Like our bus pulls up and then all these Camaros pull up and shit and Mustangs, because it was the 80s. Couple El Caminos. Night Rangers playing. They weren't there, but they were bumping from somebody's car. It would have been cool if they were there. They're Bay Area band, they're like, hey, we're here for the nerd fight. We're gonna play Sister Christian twice. You can still rock in America once and then we're gonna get out of here. Let the nerd fight commence. But no, they were just playing out of a car. So we square up. I've never fought anybody before in my life. I've never had any training. I've had people offer me. Like, there was an old dude in my neighborhood who was also the wrestling coach. And I used to ride by his house on my paper out. And he was always like, Posing, come in here and I'll show you how to take a punch. (laughs) No. (laughs) That sounds awful. That's how I wind up in your basement with a gas rag in my mouth. <laughs> so I don't know how to fight. I'm back on the bus. I don't know how to fight. I get off the bus. We're in a circle. I've got to do this. Uh, we take our glasses off because we're both nerds. Put our glasses away and then we go at it. But I don't do anything. I'm just like mostly half hugging him and just trying not to get hit and he's trying to punch me. And I'm like, this sucks. I thought we were friends. And his glasses fall off. And I'm like, oh man, this is the ultimate asshole move. But here's how I end this shit. So I just fucking stomped on his glasses. I'm a dick sometimes. (laughs) Turns out they were my glasses. (laughs) I didn't even look. I'd never been confident about anything before in my life. I chose that moment to have confidence finally. I was like, this is how I end this, ha ha. Smash. Everybody's like, oh man, pointing at me, Night Rangers laughing. Uh, My glasses are now in like six pieces and I have to walk home to our shitty apartment and tell my mom that Ian stomped on my glasses. <laughs> That's the low point. Things get better. Uh, I start yelling about my dick into a microphone. <laughs> and I have this crazy life. I mean, I'm not the most famous comic in the world, but I have great memories. I've met my favorite bands. I met musicians, people I worship. I got to meet Rush. I'm friends with the two nice guys in Metallica. I once had Rob Zombie say this to me 16 years ago. Rob Zombie said, hey, you want to get shot in the face? I'm like, in a movie? He's like, yeah, sure. Let's put it in a movie. That's not everybody else's dream, but that's my dream to get shot in the face in a horror movie. I'm living my dreams. I've met the funniest fucking comedians in the world. You know, everybody. I've worked with Rickles here, Chicago Theater, 
in my 20s, I opened for Rickles. It was one of the best things that fucking ever happened to me. It was amazing. Uh, but I've had this long career, man, and I, lo- I worship things. I worship my relationships, these friendships I made. In 94, I uh, moved from San Francisco to Los Angeles, and I was living with a couple people, a couple comedians and my manager, and we had a three-story house in the hills there where Manson did his business. <laughs> Well, his people did his business. <laughs> he just sat around. <laughs> That's my manson. I've never done that before, but it's pretty, pretty dead on. <laughs> I don't know why I digress and do a manson in my special. You fucking idiot. Get through this joke. So we had the earth ra- Northridge earthquake. It's a big earthquake, happens in 94. And I've been through a bunch of earthquakes because I grew up in Northern California, so I'm used to them. I was like, ah, oh, this is fucking nothing. You know, so I just grabbed my weed and ran out of the house. <laughs> and then we found out after the earthquake, during aftershocks, that if you could go to certain places of the house and you could shake the house, it would feel like an aftershock, right? So my roommate and I found out that if we went to the second floor where our rooms were and shook our windows, it would feel like an earthquake on the third floor. So we did that to all our friends. I pranked people all the fucking time. So many. I had my girlfriend at the time, at one point she's like, stop fucking doing that! I did it like 60 more times. So I can't let go of a joke. I thought it was so funny. Dave Chappelle's in our house one day from comedy and controversy and name dropping. We're hanging. Maybe we were smoking weed. We were. We were playing 90s video games, but then you just called them video games. A little Sega. Sega. We're hanging out. And out of nowhere, Dave goes, man, I hate earthquakes. And I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, me too. I'm looking at my room and I'm like, oh shit, oh shit. He goes on, because he grew up on the East Coast. He's not familiar with them. They freak him the fuck out. He hates them. I'm like, enough. (laughs) I wait a little bit. I give my roommate the signal. We head down to the second floor. We go to our window frames. I shook that window frame so fucking hard, and like the longest I'd ever done it, like 45 seconds. This is like an eight-pointer, like, and it's lasting. (laughs) It's rolling. Shaking the shit out of the house. We go back upstairs. True story. Dave was gone. (laughs) We found out later from his management that we scared him so bad, he ran down, didn't even see us on the second floor. Ran to the first floor, ran outside of our house, got into his rental car, drove to the fucking Los Angeles airport, and flew the fuck home. I haven't seen him in 26 years. <laughs> if you see that dude, ask him if he still hates earthquakes. You girl had to go to jail for 30 days. Oh. Moment of silence for the death of my white privilege. <laughs> it died in Arizona. <laughs> and like I said, I'm from Wisconsin and in Wisconsin, you can get about four DUIs before they call your landline, and they're like, hey, stop it. (laughs) So So I served my time in Los Angeles at the Beverly Hills Pay to Stay. Re-enter white privilege. And I was able to get out from eight to eight, Monday through Saturday to go to work. And the 4th of July was within my sentence somewhere. Um, so I got out to go to work, but I went to a party and I was at this party and I was talking to this guy and I was like, has anyone ever told you that you look like a fun sized usher? And he was like, I'm usher. And I was like, oh shit, I gotta go. 
And he was like, where are you going, Ma? And I was like, jail. <laughs> and he didn't believe me, so he was like, let me take you to jail. So Usher, living up to its name. <laughs> ushered me to jail. And I went into jail and I did not come out. And thank God for that, you guys, because I was reading TMZ recently and he's getting sued for giving everyone herpes. <laughs> and I definitely would have fucked Usher. <laughs> It was like my herpes matrix, like <laughs> <laughs> Narrowly avoided that shit. <laughs> to be fair though, he did warn us with gotta let it burn. I don't judge, I try not to judge anyone that lives any different than me, okay? I don't judge anyone that's gay. I'm not gay myself, but I saw Zac Efron shirtless in Baywatch and I was like, huh. Maybe this is how it starts. I'm just saying, <laughs> I don't judge. I used to open on tour for a comedian named Jim Norton. Anybody here a Jim Norton fan? Woo! Nice, got some Jim heads in the house. So Jim's favorite thing to do is to humiliate people. And I made the mistake of telling him that I embarrass very easily for a comedian. And he just milked that every day for three years on tour. When we were in public, he would constantly accuse me of shoplifting. <laughs> we would be checking out at a CVS pharmacy and just deadpan in front of the cashier, he would turn to me and go, are you not gonna pay for all the things in your purse? <laughs> and I would just start shivering like a shelter chihuahua, like. I would just end up paying for lipstick that I've owned for five years. I was like, just take my money. I'm so sorry. I hate this. It was traumatizing. By far, the most embarrassing thing he would do, he would do with his bodyguard. We traveled with this seven foot tall guy named Kenny. Picture Frankenstein with less people skills. <laughs> just an oaf. And I don't know if you women have ever ordered anything on victoriasecret.com, but sometimes you get that free tote bag with purchase. If you have even a shred of self-respect, you immediately throw it in the garbage where it belongs. I used it as my day-to-day -day purse for seven years. <laughs> I have no dignity. It says Victoria's Secret in big letters on the sides, like it's very obnoxious. And I would travel with this. So when we were on tour, we'd have to get to the airport at five in the morning. And you guys know how you look at the airport at 5 a.m., right? Just greasy, disheveled, gross. So I'd look like that and I'd have this bag and everybody's just quietly shuffling about the airport. And all of a sudden, his bodyguard would shout, Victoria's Secret model coming through. <laughs> and everybody, and I mean everybody, would stop and look at me wide-eyed and then go. <laughs> Do you know how quickly your self-esteem goes in the toilet? When you can watch a hundred people decide in half a second, no, she's not. You're like, all right. <laughs> Just gonna go walk into traffic now, thanks. <laughs> I've started a brand new award. It's called Best Audience Member of a Filmed Special. And you're all in the running. Yeah. There's $250 at stake here. You could win $250 US dollars. Why did I choose US dollars? Because I, I thought the exchange rate would help me out, but the pound has plunged. <laughs> Yeesh. So little tips for you if you want to be the best audience member at the end of the show. Uh, laugh loudly, uh, be, be supportive, don't drop lens caps. Um. I admire realism. I like it. I think it's an impressive thing to be able to pull off. Halloween, realistic costumes, they're the best. They have the most respect from me. Um, no laziness on Halloween, thank you. Gentlemen showing up in a dinner jacket and bow tie and pretending that you are James Bond, it will not do. 
Unless you show up with a pistol and PTSD, I do not. <laughs> I'd better find you later in the party, showering in your clothes with another equally traumatized woman. <laughs> or being very good at poker, something like that. Just very basic ideas, like Dave Ramsey. You know Dave Ramsey, just very, <laughs> I'm nervous about this bit, honestly. <laughs> Every time I go home, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Dave Ramsey, ah! I was like, this guy's a genius, better read this book. All right, what do we do first, Dave? Save $1,000. Okay, what do we do second? Don't spend money you don't have. Who is this financial wizard? <laughs> I can make that joke. Listen, I can make that joke. I used to date a girl that worked for Dave Ramsey. I did. She was very impressed. I kept all my credit cards in different envelopes. It was very... <laughs> That joke was not for everyone. Uh... And my grandma, she's on me about getting married. I, I love her, but very annoying. Uh, <laughs> she's 95, she just harasses me. She's just like, when are you gonna get married? When are you gonna get married? It bothers me, because I never pressure her about her next milestone. Uh, <laughs> super chill about that. I rarely bring it up. Uh, she's like, you're 39. When are you gonna take the next step? I'm like, you're 95. When are you gonna take your last one? Uh, oh, how could he? I know, I know. Where's my save the date? You're right, guys. It's not nice of her. You're right. She's in a nursing home. She got in there because a couple of years ago, she had a surgery. Doctors were like, at her age, she's never going to make it. So my family thought it was going to be the end. It wasn't, but I thought it was. So I visit her in the hospital every day. I was by her bedside. She was on a lot of drugs. Took her a lot of effort to talk. She could only say one thing a day. So she popped up, this is all she had one of the days. She looks at me, she just goes, Anthony, at night, doctors come in this hospital and have sex with everyone in here. <laughs> then she closed her eyes and went back to bed. And I was like, you gotta wake up <laughs> and say one more thing. So when people ask about your last words, I am not lying. They're like, do you remember what her words were? I'm like, I remember what they weren't. Uh, <laughs> was it a malpractice conspiracy theory about a brothel hospital? <laughs> she mentioned the sunset. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm Italian. I know I look like a Turkish freedom fighter. But... <laughs> My last name is DeVito, and because I'm in show business, people just assume Danny DeVito is my dad. Which would be flattering if he was a neutral looking human being. That is not a compliment, he played the penguin. <laughs> like, ah, I think you could be from the bloodline of a human egg, that's all. Or would that be upsetting for you to hear? My dad actually, he died when I was a baby. And uh, by my mom, she never wanted me to feel different. So every year she would give me a Father's Day card and she would go, you're your own dad. <laughs> Which made me feel different. Uh, <laughs> which just gave me an excuse for bad grace. My grandma would be like, another C, Anthony? I'd be like, you try juggling multiplication and raising a son. <laughs> Not easy on us kid parents. It's hard being a single parent. You're just on your own as a person. So sixth grade, my mom made my Halloween costume. She just poked two holes in a white sheet. Eyes a ghost. But I loved baseball so much as a kid, she traced New York Yankees logos all over the sheet. She hands it to me, she goes, you're the Yankee ghost. You haunt the stadium. That's why, as a parent, you might need a partner. Uh, just to have someone to run your ideas by. Uh, it was a rough draft that went right to print, because no eyeballs got on that thing. My mom didn't know they make Yankees bed sheets. I went to school, I just look weird and poor. Uh, my mom, yeah, she's crazy. Uh, all pandemic, she got really into this subtitled Korean uh, Netflix show, Vincenzo. And because of that, my Italian mother has just pivoted into Asian person. And I used to be like, cultural appropriation is wrong. But when you're 75, it's adorable. Uh, 
She drinks sake every night. Her fridge is filled with dragon fruit. She is one of those cats with the wavy arm in her bedroom, like a business. And I've heard people be like, I've read a book. I'm coming out of this pandemic, a different guy. My mom is like, hold my rice wine. I am now a proud Korean woman. So. Yeah, she's the best though. She is, uh, she's on me. My mom is on me about having kids. And I don't know what to do because I financially support my mom. I pay all her bills. So I don't know how to tell her that I can't afford children unless she is out of the picture. Uh, <laughs> she's like, I'd do anything for a grandkid. I'm like, anything? Even the ultimate sacrifice? <laughs> I was raised by all women. It was my mom, my grandma, and four aunts. And because of that, guys think I have insights on how to hit on women. They'll be like, you gotta be good with girls. It's like, why? You think my aunt sat me down? Like, here's how you fuck us. Uh, you know? Some tips to bang Bev, maybe. You know? She's not gonna like that. <laughs> no, man, skeevy dudes, horny older brothers, they teach you how to hit on women. Women teach you how to listen to women. Take you home from a bar? I have no idea. You got a thyroid problem? Let's talk about it. Let's get in there. Let's name it. Let's raise it. <laughs> My uncle, he was the only guy around, and he had, he had no parental ability whatsoever, but he always wanted an assessment of his performance. He'd always be like, how am I doing? I'd be like, you're drinking and driving. Uh, that's how you're doing. Uh, so, high school, I made the basketball team. My uncle goes, we gotta get you a jock strap. <laughs> if you've never seen a jock strap, it is a plastic cup for your genitals. And then it is a coarse and difficult thong in the back. <laughs> it's like a bungee cord attached to a salad bowl. And you're like, who's ready to shoot hoops? <laughs> so, we go to Foot Locker together to get this thing. Foot Locker employee looks at me and he goes, what's the size of your crotch? <laughs> And nobody had ever asked me that before. I just stared at him nervously. He looked at my uncle. My uncle didn't know what to do. My uncle just goes, he's Italian. What do you think? And it worked. The guy went, say no more. He goes to the back, comes back minutes later, largest jock strap that they make. The Italian model, El Domo. And Looking back, none of that should have happened at all. That is not a position you put a child in, not a Foot Locker employee. And my uncle should have known that is not a position you put an uncle in. The Foot Locker employee is like, young child, what's the size of your crotch? And I'm like, this man knows. <laughs> And the employee's like, is that your dad? I'm like, that is not my dad. No. Calls himself Uncle Paul. But I should call him Uncle Pal. He's a weird dude. My uncle's like, how am I doing? I'm like, you're gonna get arrested in Foot Locker. Uh, the first of its kind. They're gonna blow the whistle. <laughs> my family, they're all conservative too. I'm not, politically. But I think we differ more because of our age. You know, my mom is 75, I'm 39. We are focused on different things. Like her biggest fear are immigrants. And my biggest fear is she'll say that to someone. So, uh, that's where we part ways. Come back and fracking the economy. So they call me up and they're like, hey Dave, do you want to fly down here and uh, open up for Snoop Dogg? And I was like, yeah, no one in my family's ever done that before. Um, my dad's gonna be so proud. That's why grandpa fought in the war. It's not even really Beyonce that I'm mad at. I just don't like that her adult fans enjoy her the way that children enjoy like Blue's Clues or Dora the Explorer. Like, I walked into my 27-year-old girlfriend who has a college degree, sitting crisscross applesauce in front of a propped-up iPad, watching Baychella on Netflix. And Beyonce's just like, ladies, do we run the world? And she's like, yes! How is that different from swipe or no swiping? Is he always gonna be in court? Mark Zuckerberg. Do you want the truth? I feel sorry for Mark Zuckerberg. I really do. I feel so very sorry for him. Because first of all, with Facebook, it's free. It's free. 
Really? Do you think you get anything in this life for free without a sinister motive? Honestly. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Also, I just, I feel sorry for him because he gets all the blame, Mark Zuckerberg. He gets all the blame, not Facebook, not the idea of data harvesting him personally. They called him paranoid in court yesterday. Yesterday, they said, you're paranoid, sir. I said, yeah, I'd be, I'd be paranoid if I was Mark Zuckerberg. Wouldn't you? He was 19 years of age when he founded Facebook, 19. By the time he was 25, a Hollywood film came out where the plot was Mark Zuckerberg is a cunt. But of course, <laughs> of course he's paranoid. But then if I'm at a party and someone puts on Justin Timberlake, I black out, right? I black out because I hate Justin Timberlake. I hate Justin Timberlake and I'm not afraid to ruin a party over it, okay? He's not good. He's not good. He built his career on appropriating black culture and on the backs of two pop icons and national treasures. Say it with me. Britney Spears and Janet Jackson. That's right. So I'm in therapy. Anybody here in therapy? Oh, wow. That's a nice response. Usually it's just one person that's like, help, help. <laughs> Let's talk to you. Yeah, I think therapy is amazing. Uh, but I guess not everybody always needs therapy. Uh, some people do need therapy. And you can usually tell who those people are because they say things like, I don't need any fucking therapy. <laughs> I prefer to be a burden to my loved ones. <laughs> You're like, uh, sir, this is an Arby's? Why are you shouting? <laughs> You're alarming the children. I had to work on my self-worth in therapy because I kept attracting some of the wrong people. One of my friends told me this quote. She said, once you know your worth, you'll stop giving people discounts. And I was like, well, slap my tits and call me Groupon, baby. <laughs> Boy, I've been out here like, hey, you got a personality disorder and no job, this pussy's 90% off, hey! <laughs> no credit, no problem, get in here. <laughs> that makes it sound like my life has been a dick buffet. It has not. Uh, I have a very low body count. I love that that's what we call it, body count, like we're all just fucking people to death, like, <laughs> <laughs> It sounds so system of a down for no reason, you know? <laughs> I think I would have a higher body count if STDs didn't exist, but I'm just so terrified to ever get one that I don't want to gamble. Like, I just can't believe that in 2022, our best defense against them is still just condoms in the honor system. <laughs> Scouts honor, bro. I'm like, you lied about your height. I'm supposed to trust you on chlamydia? No. <laughs> Kick rocks, get out of here. I was reading online that uh, some of the very first condoms back in the 1800s were really thick. Like they used to basically just cut up bike tires. <laughs> and they've obviously gotten thinner over time, which I'm sure was a guy's idea, you know. I bet the women back then were pissed like, but keep it girthy. <laughs> Keep that deep dish condom on. <laughs> we don't have electricity. This is the only joy I have. <laughs> I had a woman come to one of my shows recently who I think was from the 1800s. Um, she was very old. And she came up to me afterward and she was like, I was a makeup artist for 30 years. And at this point I'm thinking, oh, I think she's about to compliment my makeup. That's so nice. And then she goes, your face was so oily when you were on stage. It was the only thing I could look at. The lights were hitting it so bright that I had to squint to look at you. And that's when I heard my brain say, well, tonight's the night we go to jail for throat punching someone's Nana. You just hit a certain age where you walk around like, fuck it, burn it to the ground. Like, <laughs> just traumatizing people. I'm like, who is this woman's poor husband? You know, we gotta save him. I just picture him getting out of the shower and she's like, 
Your balls make me sick. <laughs> of course, I didn't say any of that to her. I was just like, what powder do you recommend? <laughs> I have no backbone. I've also become self-conscious of this very specific thing. Did you girls have that dress code in middle school where you had to wear shorts that were longer than the length of your fingertips to your sides? Okay, right? To prevent girls from wearing booty shorts. So that was the day I learned I have freakishly long arms <laughs> for my short height. I'm only 5'4". All the girls had to line up. We put our arms down. And I don't know if you can see what's happening right now. I'll show you on this side too. <laughs> but I did this and I looked down and I was like, oh no. I'm gonna have to wear men's Jinko jeans to not get expelled. <laughs> Just rolling into home ec with my chain wallet and lugs like. Let's bake these muffins, Diane. The third member of the Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> I don't know much about the Insane Clown Posse, but it does make me laugh picturing those guys having to take their makeup off at the end of the night. Because <laughs> they just, they seem so tough on stage. Like, I'm gonna stab this dude and bang your chick. And then two hours later, they're like, these Neutrogena wipes are lovely. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Don't burn my eyes. <laughs> so. Before I started headlining, I used to open on tour for a comedian named Jim Norton. Anybody here a Jim Norton fan? Woo! Nice. Got some Jim heads in the house. So Jim's favorite thing to do is to humiliate people. And I made the mistake of telling him that I embarrass very easily for a comedian. And he just milked that every day for three years on tour. When we were in public, he would constantly accuse me of shoplifting. <laughs> We would be checking out at a CVS pharmacy and just deadpan in front of the cashier, he would turn to me and go, are you not gonna pay for all the things in your purse? <laughs> and I would just start shivering like a shelter chihuahua. Like, I would just end up paying for lipstick that I've owned for five years. I was like, just take my money, I'm so sorry. I hate this. It was traumatizing. By far, the most embarrassing thing he would do, he would do with his bodyguard. We traveled with this seven foot tall guy named Kenny. Picture Frankenstein with less people skills. <laughs> Just an oaf. And I don't know if you women have ever ordered anything on victoriasecret.com, but sometimes you get that free tote bag with purchase. Okay. If you have even a shred of self-respect, you immediately throw it in the garbage where it belongs. I used it as my day-to-day -day purse for seven years. <laughs> I have no dignity. It says Victoria's Secret in big letters on the sides, like it's very obnoxious. And I would travel with this. So when we were on tour, we'd have to get to the airport at five in the morning. And you guys know how you look at the airport at 5 a.m., right? Just greasy, disheveled, gross. So I'd look like that and I'd have this bag and everybody's just quietly shuffling about the airport. And all of a sudden, his bodyguard would shout Victoria's Secret model coming through. <laughs> and everybody, and I mean everybody, would stop and look at me wide-eyed and then go, quickly your self-esteem goes in the toilet when you can watch a hundred people decide in half a second no she's not You're like all right it's <laughs> gonna go walk into traffic now thanks <laughs> so i'm from washington state originally and uh, they just passed this new legislation that is banning schools from continuing to use native american mascots which is great and the high school I went to, our mascot was the Blackhawks. And it takes a linguistic specialist to tell the difference between somebody saying Blackhawks <laughs> 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 
and black cocks. And let me tell you, it was pretty wild growing up, going to football games and watching a dozen cheerleaders shout to a stand of parents. We love black cocks, yes we do. We love black cocks, how about you? And then watching everybody on the other team be like, what the fuck? It's like the mating call of the Kardashians. So I had my bachelorette party down in Vegas and we went to the Magic Mike live show. Has anybody here been to the Magic Mike live show? Oh, we got a few. Oh, are you still wet? Hey. Girl, it is crazy what happens at the show. They brought it back during COVID, which surprised me because if we are concerned about droplets, women are gushing fluid at the show. <laughs> Medically, it's a problem, okay? It changes the humidity in the room. <laughs> women with straight hair leave with curly hair. It's like a rainforest cafe in there. That air is thick. Three C's. But now that the show's back, you gotta go. Oh, it is the cream of the cock. Just, oh. <laughs> Chef's kiss. For two hours, these oiled up six packs just grind the stage, and they sing to you, they lick whipped cream off your body, and then they bring some women on stage, and then they take your top off, and then they take your pants off, and then they fuck you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I just want to see how far you guys would go with me on that part. <laughs> Did you hear how quiet it got in here? Oh. Could you feel every woman just slowly leaning further forward in her seat? Like, I'm pulling out her phone, checking flights to Vegas. <laughs> A taxi! Were you like, was I in the bathroom when that happened? How did I miss that? No, they don't do that. That'd be pretty dope. Probably charge a lot more for tickets. <laughs> but you do get a lot for your money. At the end of the show, they do bring some women on stage and then they put you in harnesses and they put one of the guys beneath you and you get to like ride the men into the sky <laughs> like Free Willy. <laughs> they get you hornier than you've ever been in your entire life. And then they just set you loose. <laughs> into the wild. <laughs> Single dudes, if you were ever trying to fuck in Vegas, just go stand outside the Magic Mike exit. <laughs> like a catcher. <laughs> we're running out of there, holes open like a starfish, ready to go. <laughs> oh. That's something TripAdvisor doesn't tell you, and that's what I'm here for. <laughs> I'm like your creepy uncle. I'm just helping you get laid. I would like to go back to the show, but not for anything wedding related, because there's usually two types of women that go. The host comes out and he goes, all right, ladies, make some noise if you're here for a bachelorette party. And there's a bunch of young 20-something girls that are like, ah, oh my God, penises. Ah. <laughs> and then the host goes, all right, now who here is celebrating a divorce? <laughs> and it's just one table of women in their 40s like, give me your dick. You're like, oh my God. Finally got a chance to hear the music of Keith Urban. I thought to myself, gee, this, uh, this guy might want to change his name to Keith Rural. If you know what I mean. Greta Thunberg's autistic. She's trying to save the earth from ourselves. And the best we can come up with is, ah, uh, she's like a girl. And she looks weird. She's a kid. So nah. Oh, good. Okay, I guess it's your unvaxxed, homeschooled, soft-boiled degenerate that's going to save the universe. Yeah, that kid that's going to overdose at an EDM concert and then fight with the paramedics over the flat earth theory is going to be the one. Mama says on account of her womb being dead means that I'm just an angel for being here. Okay, we'll trust. 
Let's elect you into office. The actor who's won more uh, Best Actor Oscars than anyone else is Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah, he, uh, he was in a movie one time called The Boxer, uh, where he trained for a year before the movie started filming. And by the end of it, his trainer claimed that Daniel had gotten so good at boxing that he could have been a professional boxer if he wanted to. He's not even athletic. He's just that good at acting. <laughs> He's good enough at acting that he can act good enough at boxing to beat a professional boxer. <laughs> could you imagine how embarrassing that would be for them? Like, so, Jonsky, you really looked outmatched in the ring tonight with Daniel Day-Lewis. What do you think happened? <laughs> oh, man, I gave it my all in there. He was just so believable. Every time he hit me, I thought, that's just how a boxer would do it. I want to start off by saying that uh, you can be anything that you want to be, uh, especially on Facebook. Uh, you can be any corporation that you want to be. Uh, this is uh, on Black Friday a few years ago. It was always crazy. Uh, some companies were starting to make their employees come in on Thanksgiving. They started moving Black Friday up to Thanksgiving. And then uh, other stores, they decided they were going to stay closed on Thanksgiving so their employees could have the time off. Like TJ Maxx was one of those stores that stayed closed. Uh, and I was on their Facebook page, and I saw someone wrote them like a negative message about this. Like this person, Trey, is like, boo, you should be open tomorrow. It's just another day. So... I made a Facebook page that looks just like TJ Maxx <laughs> and said, we'll be open for Thanksgiving, but only if your house is too. <laughs> He's like, I'm reporting who made this rude TJ Maxx comment to me. <laughs> we would read the report, but unfortunately we are still closed. <laughs> and that made Trey angry. All right, now this is the, the Macy's Day Parade. Uh, this is the same year. Uh, on the Macy's Day Parade, it featured a kiss between two women, and they aired it on TV. Now this is the same tray that we just saw writing to TJ Maxx, writing to Macy's now, saying, being G dot dot is unnatural and not okay. It's okay to be gay, and it's okay to be Trey. <laughs> Love yourself. It'll all be okay. Trey, we're still closed. <laughs> He's like, Macy's and TJ Maxx are related? <laughs> we're gay lovers. This is a brand of pimento cheese that uh, Costco was carrying this cheese. And so the owner of the pimento cheese said hateful things about Black Lives Matter. So then Costco stopped selling this brand of cheese. This is someone writing to Costco saying that they're going to boycott them now because they did this. So uh, I responded as Costco and said, well, sorry to hear your, we're sorry to hear you're boycotting us. We hope you have a better experience with Kraft, Philadelphia, Cabot, and the many other cheeses. <laughs> And they wrote back and said they've been a loyal customer for over 20 years. And then Cabot's Cheese commented and said, we don't want your business. Please make your own cheese. <laughs> oh, my. It looks like you're down to just Kraft in Philadelphia. <laughs> Kraft's like, we'll pass. <laughs> Philadelphia's like, yeah, I think we're all set. <laughs> Hold on, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, this is a, a news station in Fox 2 Detroit. They shared an article about the NBA players that boycotted a game uh, to protest racial injustice. Here's a comment on that post from someone named Paul saying, who cares? In all caps. So I responded as the Detroit Police Department and said, we care. And now you have a warrant out. Good luck. He's like, I have a warrant? For what? Just because I said, who cares? I'll email Chief Craig and see what he says. 
Chief Craig's like, you're going to jail, Paul. Uh, you may remember uh, this happened a few years ago. I guess IHOP ran, ran a promotion uh, that they were going to uh, change their name uh, to IHOB. And they told everyone it was going to be permanent, but it was just a promotional stunt that lasted only like a month. But they ran a contest and, and asked people to guess what the B stood for. And people all assumed, yeah, it's just it's breakfast. It's International House of Breakfast. Then IHOP came out and said, no, it's actually burgers. And people lost their minds over this. Uh, they're writing to IHOP. This person, Dwayne's like, fire your CEO immediately. This name change is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. And Waffle House is like, we think it's the right decision. <laughs> if you need a cigarette, talk to your server. <laughs> you want some fucking waffles or what? People were really shitting on IHOP about this. This is the actual Wendy's saying, can't wait to try a burger from the place that decided pancakes were too hard. So I felt like someone needed to stick up for IHOP. So I made my own IHOP Facebook page and said, if you have a problem with us changing our name, then the B is for balls and you can suck ours. As you can see, this is a very successful post. Perhaps one of the greatest in IHOP social media history. <laughs> People wrote on IHOP's page, this person said, I heard Denny's management and staff celebrating all day, and now they're out of meth. Celebration over. <laughs> like, what are you, 16 years old? That's the least professional answer possible from someone supposedly representing IHOP. Our family will never dine at IHOP again. That's because your family will be dining at IHOP. <laughs> uh, you can be any pastor that you want to be. This is mega church pastor Joel Steen. One of the richest pastors in the world also doesn't ever help anybody out at all. Keeps all his money. Uh, he has a huge house. He preaches in front of a giant globe. He has tons of people watch him on TV. He has a huge following on Facebook, and people write to him like this person who said they're requesting prayer for their marriage. Uh, so I made my own Joel Steam Ministries <laughs> Facebook page. And I responded and said, unfortunately, your Joel Steam prayer request account has not been activated. In order to activate your account, you'll need to add a monthly donation of $24.99. That gets you access to three prayer requests per month. I went on to explain the Platinum Prayer Request membership. That's 10 per month, $49.99. And you can see him perform at your local arena. Someone screenshotted this uh, and started passing it around so much that the actual Joel Steen had to put the fake stamp on it. And then his church put the fake stamp on it. Uh, Snopes even picked it up. False. So I had to make my own Snopes page. True. <laughs> you can be any city that you want to be. I used to live in Atlanta, Georgia. When I was there, I racked up a lot of parking and traffic tickets. Uh, before I moved, I went to court and uh, I had to pay all my fines. So that same day I went home and I made a Facebook page called City of Atlanta and I used the, the city seal, the city of Atlanta's seal, uh, and I started making announcements. Like, we've removed the speed limit signs because no one was really paying attention to them. If you aren't sure how fast to go, just feel it out. <laughs> and we're shutting down a bunch of roads today. We can't tell you which ones, but you'll figure it out when your day is ruined. <laughs> Fuck it, just pee wherever you want. Uh, and this made the news uh, in Atlanta. And the actual city of Atlanta, uh, they gave a statement to the news saying I wasn't authorized to use the city trademark. Uh, and they're working with Facebook to take it down. So then the news, they asked me if I had a response to that statement. And I said, yes. And they aired this on the news. I said, I'll remove the logo from the page and discontinue posting as city of Atlanta. 
in exchange for the following. All of my parking and traffic tickets are absolved. $60 cash. Two free rides on the trolley. <laughs> I don't have an issue with Prince Harry, but I'm starting to have an issue with how much I keep hearing about Prince Harry. So I'm starting to have an issue with Prince Harry. And he said he was leaving the royal family for privacy, his words. But ever since he's moved, all he's done is do a Netflix reality TV series, a tell-all book, and now a Spotify podcast. Not the most private activities, Harry. <laughs> to the tune of $100 million. And his book should have talked about how awesome it is to be the prince, how awesome it is to have everything, get any private jets, any backstage passes you want. But, but the mistake he made was he was kind of whiny in the book. He was like, my brother was mean to me. <laughs> he pushed me and he hung out with his friends. <laughs> Sounds like you have a normal older brother. <laughs> and people feel bad for him. They're like, they're like, he was born into a job. He was born into an institution. Every human is born into a job. He's the only one born into a job where you don't have to do a job. <laughs> and when he moved to Hollywood, was it hard? No, I have a friend that moved to LA and lived in a Walmart parking lot in his car. And after a year, he moved back to Sevierville, Tennessee with his parents. <laughs> People should feel bad for Douglas. But do they? No, they do not. They make fun of Douglas. They're like, I can't believe you thought you'd make it. He's like, I know, I suck. <laughs> Prince Harry moved to LA. Oprah hooked him up with Tyler Perry's Mansion, which is a Tyler Perry movie I would like to see. <laughs> with Prince Harry played by Tyler Perry. Megan played by Tyler Perry. <laughs> Oprah, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry played by Idris Elba. <laughs> and Princess Kate played by Meghan Markle. She's a solid actress. <laughs> and Prince William played by Matt Damon. <clears throat> <clears throat> Call it Trading Places 3, Medea Takes Sussex. <laughs> I saw that R. Kelly was arrested after an FBI agent watched his Lifetime docuseries. And it made me wonder, is the FBI finding out about crime the same way I am? Just friend referrals on what's bingeable? Should we arrest Robert Durst? Let's look at the tomato meter first. <laughs> yeah, he's doing well. I have a friend that watches murder documentaries because she said it'll help her, help her avoid murderers. But I feel like murderers are also watching murder docs, or as they call them, tutorials. And because we're in North Carolina, I want to ask you about the most interesting murder doc I'm aware of, The Staircase. Are you familiar? <laughs> Happened in the Durham area. There's a documentary. And how many of you have heard of the owl theory? Love it. Yes, a bunch of you, right on. Yeah, it kind of combines birds and murder docs, so it's like really right up my alley. <laughs> but basically, if you watch The Staircase documentary, this husband it goes to jail, even though there's really no motive, no murder weapon, uh, no evidence. There's no evidence. The whole trial, the prosecuting lawyer is just like, I mean, he is the husband. <laughs> and the jury's like, yeah, he does seem like he's the husband. <laughs> and the judge is like, husband. <laughs> Send him away. <laughs> and uh, the neighbor first put out the owl theory, which is that there's an owl. That sounds crazy, right? That an owl did it. 
until you hear the evidence. There was an owl that hung out in their neighborhood all the time. Owl killings, though rare, have happened. In her hair, they found owl feathers. And on her hands, traces of owl feathers. The murder scratches matched talons. And it happened at night. That's owl time. <laughs> but this local detective was like, owl feathers, talon marks, husband. <laughs> she could be attacked by a shark and people would be like, how do you think he pulled that off? <laughs> you think he dressed as a shark or? I never liked that guy. But as an avid bird watcher, it made me wonder. <laughs> if you're killed doing something you love, would that take the sting off just a little bit? Seeing birds you've never seen before? Wow, a barred owl. And it's looking right at me. <laughs> Let me see those binoculars. That's not a barred owl, that's a great horned owl. No, it's not, Frank. Don't mansplain owls to me. <laughs> you can hear from its distinctive barred owl call, who cooks for you? <laughs> Listen, who cooks for y'all? Hear that? <laughs> no, it's not. It's doing the distinctive great horn call. It's saying, who's awake, me too? <laughs> Frank, do you know one thing about birds? If you, how did the owl strikes, he strikes, they both did it, they were in cahoots, I said it. They were in cahoots. Send them to Alcatraz, I had to say it. I had to say it. Did you notice that groan? Thank you. Please note that groan as evidence. Because after every show, some guy will be like, dude, you should have said it was a whodunit. But if I say it's a whodunit, y'all hate me and groan. And then if I don't say it's a whodunit, four dads are like, man, missed opportunity. <laughs> oh boy, if you thought of that, man, you would have blown the roof off the place. <laughs> whodunit, man. Just go back to the writing board, man. Um, let's see. Um, did anybody else almost join a cult the last couple of years? <laughs> almost join a cult. I was watching the HBO documentary about the Nixium cult, and I don't think HBO meant it as a recruiting tool, <laughs> but they look like they're having a lot of fun up there, upstate New York. Their little bubble community, playing volleyball. I'm like, how do I join y'all's cult? Sir, it's a self-help community. Well, I am brainwashed already. Sign me up. <laughs> the most susceptible people to cults are overly trusting and seeking community. That's my Myers-Briggs. <laughs> it's bad. But ultimately, I don't think I'd join a cult because I don't like doing chores. <laughs> Which is why I was thinking maybe I start a cult, just get the gravy, and actually that's why you're here tonight. I am doing some recruiting, and follow me, I'll teach you the meaning of life, which is to do chores for me. But, you know, cult leaders have a horrible reputation, but we only ever hear about the charismatic ones that got famous, the ones that made it. You never hear about the other 10,000 guys that were like, follow me, and people were like, no, you're annoying, Derek. Oh, uh, guess I'll just keep selling potato chips. I didn't mean to uh, roast potato chip salesman on that one. I know I'm susceptible to cults because of the one time I went to Bikram hot yoga. After 10 minutes, I already finished my little coconut water and I'm dizzy. I didn't realize how hot it got. I'm like, I'll just step outside. And as I get to the door, the instructor goes, hey, where are you going? And I'm so shocked to be called out in yoga that I was honest. I said, I'm going outside because I'm hot.
He goes, I need you to stay here where I can see you so that I know you're okay. <laughs> okay, but I'm not okay. That's why I was leaving. But I, I can't say no to people. I struggle to say no. So I just returned to my mat and I was like, I guess I'll just grind this out for 80 more minutes. I made it 10 more minutes and then I was definitely dehydrated. And I'm looking at the door. I'm like, I'm just gonna make a run for it. I start gathering my things in fake downward dog. He comes over, he goes, everything okay? I'm like, please let me leave. I'm an adult man. I'm paying you $12 to be here, I'll pay you 40 to let me go. And he said, if you're too hot, you can just lay down on your mat, you'll be fine. It'd be better for the rest of the class if you didn't leave. And I'm looking at the rest of the class, they're avoiding eye contact. <laughs> so I just lay down for 70 more minutes, just so hot and so angry. I hope I die so this guy gets fired. <laughs> I hope I die loudly so it's worse for the class. <laughs> Just furiously obedient. <laughs> the class ended, I was fine, unfortunately. But I went home and looked up Bikram. They're trained not to let anybody leave because once one person leaves, everyone will leave. <laughs> And I recently learned it went bankrupt, so I win. I win the long. I hung in there for the win, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I have been told many times that I have a soothing voice. And so I thought it'd be nice to do some soothing affirmations to really, really finish on what I was made to do. And uh, so I'll just say a positive affirmation and you guys repeat it back and we'll all feel amazing. Sound good? Great. I am blessed with this life. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> that felt so good, didn't it? I know, it did. I have released all irrational fears and replace them with real fears. <laughs> okay, good. A little mumbly, but good. I forgive everyone who has ever left me. <laughs> Except for Beth. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. He said it like he meant it. Yeah, some passion. I look really good thanks to this new coat from Banana Republic. Thank you, I just got an extra 10 grand for that. Appreciate it. I am actually a better overall person than Tony Robbins. I am not currently being indoctrinated into a cult. Oh, thank you. Nice, thank you. And lastly, I understand the intricacies of the Israel-Palestine conflict. And ultimately, I stand with Tibet. Asheville, thank you so much. I'm Joe Zimmerman. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for coming out. I should.
shouldn't have. I shouldn't have given myself the business. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, you're standing. I'm delighted. Wow, this feels good. This feels nice. Thank you. Thank you for giving me roses. All right, I'm going to leave. You're the best. This is crazy. I mean, I shouldn't have. Thanks again, Nashville. I'm really going this time. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Namaste. I don't think we would have ever heard of Michael Jackson if his dad, Joe Jackson, didn't treat him terribly. <laughs> because you know who Joe Jackson was nice to? Tito. <laughs> and half of you are wondering who the fuck Tito is. <laughs> That's my point exactly. <laughs> I think all the celebs make it so difficult because they're like, I had to work so hard to get my pre-pregnancy body back. I had to work so hard, I didn't even recognize myself after I had a baby. But what I realized, right, is that my body didn't really change. Um, the key is to have a bit of a garbage body beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a double chin and wobbly tummy since I was 13. Um, I'm back, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same old me. <laughs> okay. Flying stresses me out the most because like of the safety speech. Next time you fly, pay attention to how no one pays attention to the safety speech, okay? If the plane goes down, we're all gonna die. No one gives a shit. The other option is death. We choose death every single time, okay? Because it's boring, it doesn't command your attention. No one wants to pay attention to that shit, which is why I think every airline should hire the rapper Drake to do their safety speech. If you don't know who Drake is, Drake is a half black Canadian Jew who with those credentials has become the biggest rap star of all time. Let that sink in, okay? When I was growing up, in order to be a famous rapper, you either had to have killed somebody, been in a gang, gone to prison. This guy had a Canadian bar mitzvah. Everyone was like, that's good enough. <laughs> that's how good Drake is. And Drake says the cheesiest, corniest shit, but no one cares, because Drake said it. That's right, one of his songs, he quotes The Wizard of Oz, and no one even noticed. Yeah, in a song called 305 to my city, at the end he goes, oh Lord, we're not in Kansas anymore. I was like, is that fucking Dorothy? <laughs> and he had hood dudes being like, man, that boy Drizzy's spitting that shit. <laughs> Cause you can't, Drake, when Drake performs, it's like, it's mesmerizing. You can't help but stare at him. It looks like he's gonna do like a, like a fucking magic show or something. He's always like, he's very like physical. He's always like, Always blinking his eyes and shit, scaring the fuck out of people. Like, <laughs> contorting his face. Drake always looks like he's about to yell, but he stops. He's always about to yell something, like he's gonna traumatize his kids. It was always like. <laughs> so if he did the safety speech, you pay attention to that shit. Imagine next time you get on a plane and you hear this. It'll only take a second. I need your attention. It's important and I swear you're gonna wanna listen. I'm sorry that they paused frozen. That wasn't my intention. But if the speech could save one life, it'd be worth the effort. Yeah, and there's no smoking on here whatsoever. And don't be nervous if it's bumpy, girl. That's just the weather. Pilot Sam is in control. There ain't nobody better. And if we feel in turbulence, we're feeling it together. But we can still have some fun. This is how to work a seatbelt if you've never done one. If you see the oxygen mask, stay calm and relax. Put it on yourself before you help a loved one, yeah. Don't be nervous if there's something we can help you with. But when you see that food cart, keep your elbows in. Yeah, keep your elbows in. Look, I'm about to meet up with Alexis. She's out in Texas. I'ma study her body like I'm studying these exits. What you're located on your left and right, I go by the name of Drizzy, baby. Enjoy the flight.
<laughs> like nobody came to Chris Rock's aid. He got slapped. Nobody fucking. If I got slapped like that, I want to be hell. <laughs> Bring me a fucking blanket, man. Like, like at the end of Die Hard or something. Like, and some hot cocoa. Like, you assaulted me, man. You're Muhammad Ali. I'm Chris. Rock. What are you talking? He slapped him. No, nobody came and helped. They, they, not only did they not arrest Will Smith, they gave him a fucking Oscar. <laughs> In real time. Like, he slapped Chris Rock and turned around and said, I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> and then did a speech like, you shouldn't be slapping people. And then started crying. Fuck out of here, man. The only representation, truly, I remember this as a child. The only person I knew that had the exact same build as me, 50% Filipino, 50% German heritage, is Rob Schneider. <laughs> Google it right now if you don't believe me. <laughs> and I only know Rob Schneider is, like I said, 50-50, just like me, because my mom was, had a Filipino magazine sent to the cornfields as a kid for the culture. And he just happened to be in there and I read it and I was like, wow. So you're saying there's a chance. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know what to tell y'all, but if the only thing you can look at as a, a, a mirror, you know, for your own mixed feelings is Deuce Bigelow. You just might grow up to be an Asian American psycho. Um, you know, that's all I'm saying. It's like, it's, uh, it's weird out there. Like I, um, I think all the time, you know, it's like even the thing about mom, I, I'm not unhappy to be mixed. It's worked out pretty nicely for me, dudes. You know, I got such a spicy little blend. <laughs> I don't even know how many dudes I've let dribble up and down the court over the years. <laughs> Just kidding, that's because I had a 15-year gone girl problem with alcohol. <laughs> a lot of you guys in here remember that. <laughs> guess who doesn't? Me. <laughs> I don't know, I guess I was just kind of a slut and you know, I had more blackout sex than I could remember. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm glad I didn't have to threaten you right away like I thought at the beginning of this set where I was gonna be like, I'm so thankful that y'all are here. Um, today I checked, cause it was a, a, you know, a big day for me on stage and I am, 1,313 days sober from alcohol. <laughs> and I feel good about it, but if you hadn't been laughing the way you are and you don't keep it up, that is maybe not the case. <laughs> I heard when Sarah was like, I got a shot waiting for Hannah. Some of you guys were like, you fucking don't. <laughs> well. <laughs> We'll come back there and suck it out of her stupid cunt mouth, we will, like a snake venom. Some of you guys are just like, we can't take Hannah the way she was that whole time. So yeah, just keep laughing as hard as you can or I'm gonna relapse and end up in the slippery bathrooms at Teeny. <laughs> Find me holding a fucking PBR, a shot of her net, and a couple key bumps in my nose. I don't miss alcohol a ton because it was really just not good in my system, but like cocaine a little bit. <laughs> I just can't do it anymore because it doesn't really line up and I'm sleeping again. Uh, but life is hard and if I could just recreationally use blow, I would, dude. <laughs> You get so much fucking shit done and it was the easiest way to stay skinny. <laughs> yeah, I'm great. Three and a half years sober. Cool, Hannah, but now I actually have to like show up to Orange Theory. <laughs> Could have just gone to one of the bars downtown, you know, Tiki Bobs. It's like... <laughs> Easier obliques. Oh my God. 
He just is like, you know, I said I'd mention mom and dad. They were there today at the house praying for me. And I loved it. I was like basking in it, you know, because like I said, they're not at my show. So it's like nice that they're, they want to have this presence. And dad was saying these real cute things like, you know, Jesus, please be with Hannah on stage. <laughs> guide and direct her. <laughs> Give her clarity of mind and speech. <laughs> and I'm like, bless America, Dad, for pedophile and pussy jokes. Boy, you're cluttering Jesus' line. Um, Today, one of those check-ins that came, like I mentioned from y'all, came from Sarah, who hosted, and she was just saying, hey, we're really proud of you. Don't stress out up there. And I was like, thank you so much. And then I was like, I was sitting at the library, you know, messing around with all this, and I was just like, honestly, I'm not too worried about this, Sarah. I was like, you know most of the people in this room, like, just like I do, they're mutual friends, you know? What's the worst thing that can happen? You know, we bomb with family? <laughs> and I was like, fucking feels like Ukraine. <laughs> I for real said that today. That's not supposed to be a part of it. <laughs> it's in her text thread, it's for real. And she kind of laughed and I was like, that's all the validation I needed to say it on stage and ruin my own album. Um, <laughs> But we have to make a sound for Ukraine, dudes. If you don't laugh at that joke, Putin wins. <laughs> and do you love this country or not, nah, you know? I don't always love this country, but it's like, I'm a patriot. You know, I'm just not a racist. <laughs> and I know at home we have to check. <laughs> Like I said, I got boosted to come home. <laughs> Happy to be home. <laughs> like, dude, when I got vaccinated, I don't even want to go too much into that, but it's topical, and I know only half the room is because I know where I'm standing. <laughs> and it's okay. I'm not even going to preach to you guys about it. Everyone in that crazy house in the cornfields that I talked to you about is unvaccinated. My parents, because Jesus is going to handle it. <laughs> You know, my sister, because she's a little more hippy-dippy, green and granola, just doesn't trust it. You know, she was up my ass at the start about getting the vaccine. She's like, Hannah, what are you going to do <laughs> in 10 years from now when the side effects start coming out and you can't have children <laughs> and your eyes are bleeding? <laughs> And I'm like, first of all, chill. <laughs> Every time I've been confronted with an abortion, I had it. <laughs> so I don't know what dick's gonna come around and change that game, but for me, I think it'll be the same old two-step. I, uh... <laughs> Also, not even fucking worried about it. I'm 38, like I said, and I'm not hip to shit. <laughs> but I am up on, like, older person stuff, like my supplements. <laughs> so I don't even gotta be fucking around with abortion dudes. I take Plan B as a multivitamin. <laughs> take that home with you, a little life hack. Uh, <laughs> It's just a once daily sweep of the old womb broom. <laughs> Let that haunt your dreams. I, uh, you know, I just was like, Mel, that's the least of our concerns, buddy. <laughs> you know, the vaccine, I was like, and I don't know, if my eyes are bleeding, you know, it'll just be a class action lawsuit and I'll pump it into Mila's college fund. Uh, <laughs> let's be optimistic. And also, let's get realistic. Like I said, I can't put the shot in y'all's arm, but I was ready and willing once those fucking boys rolled off the shelf. <laughs> I spent the last two years, freshman and sophomore year of quarantine living in this state. <laughs> I was legitimately like 
begging like, boo cocky all three into me out of Walgreens. <laughs> Sick of getting this shit. Part of why I moved to Chicago last year wasn't to get away from home, I was just weary. Like I'm gonna die from all this long haul COVID. Like I'd already had it minimum two times cause I never gave up on comedy. <laughs> Past couple of years and I clearly don't value the lives of others. Um, <laughs> One, just breathing state air. <laughs> Second or third time I got COVID, it was already just like June of 2020 because I got bored here in Indiana in that one month and got a five-week boyfriend down in Pompano Beach, Florida. <laughs> yep. Um, I jeopardized my parents' lives early on to see about <laughs> dick, tan, and a manicure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 